In this video, I want to talk to you about roles, services, and features. Because I want to dig just a little bit deeper into this concept of the server roles to help you understand some of the nomenclature that you're going to hear, some of the terminology you may see out there on the exam. First of all, we've already talked about server roles, but a server role is a set of related components that will cause or allow the server to perform a specific function or a network service that we need. Now, the beauty of dividing these things up into roles that we can apply to individual servers is that a single server can be dedicated to a single role or to multiple roles. So we can have the server do whatever we want it to do. Now, obviously, the planning of the placement of these roles is a very important step in server installation. Now, you may want to think, well, okay, so if I make a mistake and one of my servers is too busy, I can move the roles around. And the answer is, yes, you can, but some are more easily moved than others. And this is not something you want to make a habit of doing. Now, when we talk about a server role, that server role really consists of three parts. The first one is the role itself, and this is really the whole related set of components that make up what we see as that role. But then services come into play. Now, services are the actual software components that provide the functionality of the server role. Now, understand within a role, oftentimes we can turn on certain services and turn off other services. And so each role has one or more related services. Some have quite a few. And we can pick and choose which one of those we want to utilize. Then features are just software components that provide additional functionalities. And these are things that we would consider to be, you know, a little less intensive or a little less, I don't know what you would call it, important, I would say, than the services. Now, the roles, services, and features are configured using the server manager. Now, you'll see this, and I'll point it out in a couple of places here in the course when we have the server manager open. But keep in mind that a lot of people like to use PowerShell. It is a command line tool that is the counterpart to Server Manager. Now, what's actually happening when we go into Server Manager in a graphical user interface type environment and set things, enable roles, services, features, and so forth, that is being translated into a PowerShell command in the background. Now, let me give you an obvious point warning, okay? Captain Obvious here. The more roles you put on that server, the greater the workload on that server. So just watch for that. Don't let them convince you on the exam to load, you know, one individual server up with 15 different server roles. So just watch for that. Now, big question. How do you determine which roles are installed on the servers? You can use Server Manager for that, or you can use the Get Windows feature commandlet in PowerShell to see what services, roles, and features are currently installed on a particular machine. So I hope this helps you understand the concept of roles because you will hear sometimes about roles, other times about services, and other times about features, and yet they all seem to be controlled through the server manager, and they all seem to be turned on or turned off the same way. Well, they're really just the role is the entire collection. Services is kind of a breakdown of that. Features are kind of a breakdown of services but they all provide the same functionality. I can put a role on a server, however many roles I want on that server. I can turn on whatever services and features, and I can mix and match as I see fit based on the services I need and the amount of workload that particular server can stand. 